Hi, Rob McKillop here. I'm just going to uh, talk you through a prelude I did yesterday. I've had a number of requests, people saying what's going on in your head when you do these preludes. Um, and here's some ideas. In uh, the first video I did on improvising uh, preludes on the lute for the Baroque period, I discussed mainly the tonic and dominant um, 151 cadence and how to expand that. This time we're going to look at something a little bit different. This is the uh, um, the Passacaglia uh, four note bass line which is uh, Hit the Road Jack, if you know that song Hit the Road Jack and Don't You Come Back no more. Th That was uh, behind my it was in my mind as I was uh, improvising on that. Uh, it's a classic uh, bass line for which we can harmonize it in a different way, in different ways. So on the A, we can have A minor. The, the piece I was preluding before uh, was in A minor, so let's start with that A minor on the A note. On the G note, we have a number of things. We can do G major. But you do tend to get these uh, parallel fifths. Uh, so we've got to avoid them. You could do a, E minor. Um, Purcell, in his Chaconne, I remember discovering this. I thought it was a wonderful discovery. <laughs> it's quite common now. Is uh, to use that G as a, the seventh of an A7 chord, which goes to D minor. Yeah, so you got A minor, A7, D minor. You know, so that that's a little personal influence for me. Uh, many composers used it, but uh, that's how where I first came across it. Um, so A minor, G or E minor, uh, D minor or F. We could use for the next note. The bass note is F. We could use F major. Uh, we could use D minor, first inversion. Um, and uh, if we've got an E on top, uh, keep that E on the second string. Even on top of the D minor. Resolve it. If we think of it as a D minor, then that's a ninth we've added, or a second. If we're thinking it as an F major chord, that's a major seventh to a 6, so an F7-6 chord. Uh, if you're doing figure bass, it would be the note F with 7-6 next to it, underneath it. Um, and then finally E, which is the dominant of A minor. So we're finding a way from a tonic down to a dominant, and we're falling down into it. Okay, now, um, yeah, you hear it's a kind of cliche, but it's a beautiful one. composers doing variations on that and you could use that in your prelude why not it's very nice um, but sometimes you want to disguise what you're doing uh, so it's not so obvious um, and so what I did when I started with unisons two A's the next chord was G or E minor where I wanted that B so I brought it in early and it gave it a nice clash Went, the bass went down to the G, but the treble went up to the F chord. I was thinking of the F chord next. Then the F comes in, and you go up to D, so we've got D minor, and then into the E chord. So something like that. kind of clean version of what I was playing with. So that's the first thing. The next thing is uh, I want to discuss is the dominant of the dominant. Now, what does that mean? Well, the dominant chord of A minor is E. Now, imagine E is the one chord. We're in the key of E, imagine. And the dominant of E is B, B7. 
So the dominant of the dominant, <laughs> well, we're in A minor, we're thinking of the dominant of the dominant chord. So we're going to play a, 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 a B7. But if you play B7 with a, the B as the root, uh, the root present in the chord, in the bass, when it goes to the E chord, uh, the tonic chord, it sounds like a, fi a final 5-1 cadence, so it sounds like the end of the piece. So we try and avoid having the root to the dominant chord uh, before the final cadence. So we're going to go for a first inversion, and uh, you think of the notes of B, B7 chord, uh, B, D sharp, F sharp, A. Well, I was on E, so I'm going to go down to D-sharp, uh, F-sharp, A. But instead of adding a B, I'm going to add a C. Now, it gives me a diminished sound, but really what it is, is a dominant chord, B7, with a flat 9. I don't like calling it a diminished 7th chord, because that doesn't tell me what the function is. And the function is a dominant chord. Going back to E. So I was on E. Could extend that. Keep in mind, if you know the arpeggios when you're improvising, you're just thinking P7 flat 9 and you know the arpeggio, hopefully you will eventually, and uh, you can do as much of that as you want, depending how you feel. So I've just kept it a simple thing. And thereafter, I went uh, from E to E7, then I was back in A minor, and I just did a 5-1 cadence, um, uh, E7, A minor. So this is uh, what was I was thinking of, uh, two things, the Passicalia hit the road jack, and the dominant of the dominant is a first inversion with a flat 9, so B7, flat 9, with the rootless B. Um, and that explains it. Now, if you've got any questions about improvising, um, I'm not a master at it, but I'm working on it. You know, I'm uh, you know, an experienced musician. I can play jazz and so on. So I'm, I'm working on it in a Baroque context on the, while I really learn the fretboard of the uh, Baroque lute. Um, I do teach via uh, Zoom and Skype and so on, if you're interested in lessons. Um, okay, that's it.